This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. The holiday season is quickly approaching and HelloFresh helps make this busy time of the year even easier with delicious recipes, pre-portioned ingredients delivered straight to your door. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and it's 25% less expensive than ordering takeout. So you can save money on food and you can get your wife something nice like this. She's gonna love it. Quality is their priority. The ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days. I have some picky eaters in my house, but with over 35 weekly recipes, there's something to keep everyone happy. HelloFresh makes it easy to customize recipes by swapping proteins or sides or even adding proteins to a veggie meal. Go to HelloFresh.com, use code OFFTHERANCH70 for 70% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com and my promo code is OFFTHERANCH70 and you get 70% off plus free shipping. Thanks HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode of Off The Ranch. <sighs> hey. Exhaust leak? Or exhaust mod? One man's trash, you know what they say? Welcome to the show. The Toyota Technical? It's running freaking good. Minus a little minor exhaust leak, which also, yeah, those fumes come straight in the cab. Feeling a little woozy right now. So, you know what I should do? Operate heavy equipment. I need to do some work out here at the goat pen. For one, the gate's way too high. Um, and I don't have a welder that's standalone, so I can't come out here and fix this thing. So I was gonna see if I could just move the dirt a little bit, um, which this, I kind of want all this cleared because the gate's in a weird spot where like you can't really get in it super easy. So I'm going to see how hard it is to dig this. I may need to bring something bigger out here than my skid steer, but I'm going to see if I can flatten that out and kind of level it out that way. And then, I don't know, this, this fence on a hill, it's a little tricky. And then I want to go in there and try to figure out, I probably need to flatten out a spot right there where I can put a little shelter for my goaties because they're gonna get big really fast. They already are getting very large. See how hard this dirt is. It might be all rocks. Oh no, very scoopable. Perfect. done uh, with this little entryway so this is just a small gate it's like eight feet wide which is not big enough to drive like a truck through that truck for sure would fit but like I want it just to be wide enough that people and then like a skid steer or a side-by-side -side if we need to man I don't know that's a big skid steer I don't know if it would fit we're about to find out but basically big enough that a side-by-side -side could get in there if we're you know taking feed in there or whatever um, we can just get in there and I needed to make this turn big enough that you could just come turning it in there. So I took all the, you know, as you can see where I cut it out. There's about a three foot drop in the side there. Just cut it all, smoothed it out, and then I put all the dirt over here because we're on a hill here. And so I just figured I'd start leveling out this way. I'm gonna go ahead and level that road. We have a nice little dirt road down over there. I'm gonna level this road all the way to that road. Just pulling some off this side, put it on this side. Let's see if I can get a skid steer through this gate. E. I don't, I don't know that I can. That's gonna be real tight. Let's see what we can do. I really need to be able to get this thing through there so I can flatten out a spot for a little barn. These tracks are wide. Dude, it might just barely make it. Oh, we got it. Piece of cake. Man, it, yeah, that was perfect. Cool. All right, we're gonna go. We need to get all these cedar trees out of here eventually. The ones that are just like piled, they are in the way. That big thing fit through that little bitty gate and it was perfect. I think I wanna put the barn thing right here cause it's flat-ish and it's really close to the gate. So, you know, if we need to feed them, this is kind of where they'll hang out. We'll have their water on this end of the pin as well and then have water and a little feeding place and a little, you know, bedding place right here. Place where they can get out of the weather. So I think I'm just gonna start kind of cutting in there and pushing dirt this way and make a big 
I don't know, 10 by 20 flat area. And move these cedars back. Giddy up, partners. Chop this side, push to this side. Now I have a nice flat, like, yeah, probably 20 foot section over here. So I'll just build a big barn there. Anybody who's built goat barns, what do I need to do or not do? I've never built a goat barn before. So would love your opinions on uh, what it should or shouldn't have. I'm just thinking dirt floors, probably metal sides, wood four by four posts to support uh, the corners and then some Probably two by sixes across the top and some two by fours in between those. Let me know. I framed some stuff before, but never a goat pen. But I figure it can't be that hard. If you've ever been like, man, I think I should get a skid steer, but you aren't sure, you should get a skid steer. It's the freaking greatest thing ever. Like, if you have, especially if you have land, if you have like 10 acres or more and you want to like do stuff with it, you want to have animals or you want to move dirt and work on it, like, God, it's so handy. We also just pick up heavy stuff with this thing all the time. Like it is so nice to have. I actually have to go to some kids soccer games right now. So uh, wish us luck. I think it's, yeah, it's the last soccer game they all have the season. So we're heading to that right now. And I'll be back out here to work the goat pins. Uh, if you guys don't just mind waiting, that'd be great. Hey, I'm back. Oh, <laughs> just killer games. Um, two losses. Yeah, my kids are athletes. Um, they get that from Mayor. This fell off the bobcat. I don't know if it's important or not. It's probably not. Ugh. Oh wait, no, it's just a pipe. That's what we did. We just made a big road right here so I can just drive my truck right up there, feed the goaties, and everybody's happy. Man, my voice, it was already like starting to go and then I went and screamed at two different soccer games and it's fully cooked. Actually, probably shouldn't say that because it's probably like half cooked. So now it's gonna be fully cooked probably later today or tomorrow. It's getting fully cooked. See all these rocks over here? They're huge. And what's interesting is that's what's under this ground. You can dig for a little bit and then you hit those giant rocks. So these were actually all pulled out. Um, we had a dozer and we were smoothing all this out and it was just really rocky right here. I mean, you can see there's shelves of that rock right here. And so it goes up and then there's a shelf. And it goes up and there's a shelf. So we took out those trying to smooth this out. I think we actually need to bring like some gravel fill in here to make this part but like this thing can do a little bit until you hit those rocks and then that thing cannot pull these things out of the ground because it has to you have to break them that, that was a huge giant piece this won't break those anyway they're crazy okay let's give our new road a try this also bounciest truck ever springs are old shocks are bad So it's, it's gonna be a two point, three point turn. All right, I'm burning out in the soft dirt. I definitely did not stall it. That is a figment of your imagination. All right, oh yeah, this is great. This will be my little feed truck. Dude, this Toyota will totally fit through that fence. Should I do it? Okay, I'm doing it. You guys talked me into it. the only vehicle I think I own that will fit in here. And it's tight. All right, I proved a point. It'll go in, I don't wanna do this. Cause then I have to back out. Whoa, I'm going off the side. <laughs> there we go, yeah buddy. Perfect road, mission accomplished. Literally could not be better. Totally, totally perfect. That's a good looking little buck. Hey bud. Look good. <laughs> Ooh, I need to check two things on this car. For one, my brake light's on. The other is 
sounds louder than before. I want to make sure there's not like an exhaust leak. Well, that might be the weird sound I was hearing. I just could hear a lot more noise when I hit the throttle. Uh, it turns out it was actually throttle noise and probably not exhaust noise. It didn't sound like a ticking, but it just sounded weird. Uh, that's probably because I was not hearing anything through a filter. That is missing the whole screw and everything. This goes here, this goes here, and there should be one screw that goes down into there to hold it all on. Hopefully it didn't fall down there. Hopefully it just fell out somewhere else. I don't know. Probably did, because if it fell in there, ah, let's just not talk about that. And then uh, that's probably why my brake light's on. Okay, fixable, both. Holy cow, that's a mean machine. Look at that thing. Ugh. That should work. Huh. That's my little sensor right there. So I bet you that is how it knows that we didn't have enough. So I think if I do that, my neighbor has a dirt bike. Okay, now we start her up and see if my brake lights off. This thing has a Holly electronic fuel injection system put on and a very loud electric pump. Listen, you can hear it running. So you let it stop, meaning it's pressurized. Start it up. Okay, that's my parking brake. Sweet, it turned off. We got one half of our problems fixed. Now I have to find a really long, skinny bolt that will thread into that, which might be tricky, but I have a lot of random bolts here. If I just rob it off a carburetor, Dude, this might work. Whoa, don't lose it. So this is a two barrel carb off the engine, um, the engine's still there, that came out of El Dorado, the low rider. Uh, yeah, this actually might be perfect. Then I have to find a like nut or a wing nut. Dude! Yeah, uh, I don't know if y'all know, but I'm a freaking genius. I was gonna go look through like, oh my gosh, it's freaking perfect. All right, gotta find a nut for it and we're good to go. I was gonna go look through our like giant pile of bolts and I was like, wait, we can just pull it off the carburetor that I'm not using anymore and I need to sell that engine anyway. It's like a 327 or maybe something smaller, I don't know. It's an engine we will never use. And now, which one of you, ha ha, look at that. Okay, you know, washer, ha, lock washer. Uh. It's not ideal. We have all these things in places, I just don't know where they are, so I'm just stealing them from the pile of greasy uh, washers and nuts here. This, oh, there it is. That's what we need. I assume a lot of you guys who watch this channel are probably a lot like me in the fact that uh, you like learning about things. Uh, for instance, Toyota pickups. I knew nothing about Toyotas um, before I you know, really got serious about getting one, and then I was like, man, everyone says this 22R engine is awesome. Why? I want to learn about it. And so now that I've had it, I've learned a ton about 22R engines and they're pretty cool. Um, we have done nothing to the engine. We just put, we took off the old carburetor because it was just not working and we put a uh, new EFI system on there and now it freaking runs like a top when it doesn't lose this bolt. Killing it. Okay. A little dusty, but good. To go. And apparently it gets dark at uh, 6 p.m. nowadays. Okay, Toyota's freaking tip top. What a good little truck. A Kentucky Ballistics is coming to Demo Ranch this week. What do you want to see me do with him? He'll be here for like two days. And we are going to, uh, we're gonna get into some stuff. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Off The Ranch. No big deal, I just did a burnout with like 97 horsepower. I love you. I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that, number? Shut up! <laughs> Don't tell Mayor.